What up, YouTube? T Boost here. Now, Disney has loads of interesting stuff premiering uh, next year, whether it's on Disney Plus, whether hopefully they're theirs and whatnot. So, with that being said, here's my top 10 anticipated Disney movies coming this year. Alright, number 10 is, is a Disney Plus film, and this one actually sounds intriguing. It's a Disney Plus film simply titled Sneakerella. Now, here's what Sneakerella is about. After falling in love with Kara King, the daughter of, of basketball um, star and sneaker tycoon Darius King, an aspirant of queen sneaker designer, gains the confidence and pursue, to pursue his dreams of becoming a professional sneakers designer with the help of his best friend Sammy and his fairy godmother. I don't know why, this sounds, it sounds a bit like Cinderella-ish in a way. But it sounds like it could be really intriguing. It is directed by um, Elizabeth Allen Rosenbaum, who directed that uh, movie Aquamarine. Uh, she's directed some other stuff as well. I don't know why. This sounds really original. It sounds intriguing. I mean, it could be terrible. That's always a possibility. But I'll give it a bad friend out. Alright, number nine. It's a Fox movie, but Disney bought Fox, so you definitely count it. Number nine, I'm going to go with Deep Water. Now, this film is based on a book by Patricia Heisman. And it follows a couple who have been, who have fallen out of love and um, stop playing mind games with each other. Now, this film also stars Ben Affleck and Ana de Armas, who are you know dating in real life now. And one major reason why I'm actually intrigued to check this one out is because it's directed by Adrian Lyne, Lyne who also gave us movies like uh, Nine and a Half Weeks. Uh, he also did Fatal Attraction. He hasn't even done a movie, like his last movie was 2002's Unfaithful with uh, Richard Gere and Diane Lane. So it's been like about, I'd like to say about 19 years since his last film. This sounds like it could be, it could be terrible, that's always a possibility. But hey, it sounds like it could be a really er interesting erotic thriller. I mean, you don't really see many erotic thrillers out there, so that's pretty cool. I'm definitely interested to check this one out. Alright, number 8, I'm going to go with Raya and the Last Dragon. Here's what it's about. Raya, voiced by Kelly Marie Trent, is a lone warrior from Kumandra, a kingdom where dragons and humans once lived harmony, but all the dragons except our uh, one dis disappeared when they sacrificed themselves to save humanity from an evil force. When the uh, when that dark dread returns 500 years later, Raya goes out in search for uh, the last dragon to bring unity back to the world. This also features the voice of uh, Aquafina. It looks a tree, looks beautifully uh, shot. You know, the animation looks great. Uh, I think this is definitely going to be really interesting. Now, it's supposed to go to both uh, Disney Plus and uh, Deers on the same day, so it looks like um, they're, so it looks like they're uh, taking uh, partners from HBO Max, I'm guessing. But, a little disappointing um, that you're actually going to have to pay for it uh, while it's on Disney Plus, so... Yeah, that's kind of dumb, but, you know, whatever. Alright, number seven, I'm going to go with Chang chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Now, this is directed by Dustin Denon, uh, Creedon, who gave us movies like Just Mercy. Uh, he did um, The Glass Castle. He's done some pretty good stuff before. This, I'm really looking forward to checking this one out. I mean, it's supposed to feature, uh, you know, the uh, master of Kung Fu, Chang chi uh, This is going to have, like, some Bruce Willis. Um, some Bruce Lee element. Uh, it's it's also supposed to star this uh, actor named Simon Lau, who also stars in the show called uh, Kim Kavins, which I I heard some really good stuff about. Never really actually saw the show, to be honest. With you. Um, it's also supposed to feature the real Mandarin. It also features the uh, Aquafina is also in this. I think this looks like like this could def definitely be pretty interesting. It is gonna be uh, Marvel's like the MCU's first ever Asian lead, so I think that's gonna be pretty cool. Alright, on uh, number 6, I'm going to go with Marvel's Eternals. Now, the film is based around the group of immortal beings created by Cosmic God. The cast like, includes the likes of uh, Kamel Nagiani, Richard Madden, Kit Harrington, Lauren Redlaw, Brian Tyree Henry, Salma Hayek, Don Lee, and the aforementioned uh, Joel A. I mean, this... Oh, and Salma Hayek's in this too. Now, The Eternals is also being directed by, uh, by Chloe Zhao, who is actually, who could easily become the first, uh, Asian female, at, um, director to win an Oscar for Best Director, so that's gonna be pretty cool to see. 
I'm really like I'm really intrigued to check out Eternal. I mean, we were we could have easily had the movie uh, last year if it wasn't for the pandemic. But I'm looking forward to checking this out in general. You know, it could easily become the next Gods of the Galaxy. So yeah, I'll definitely give this one a go. All right, number five. I'm gonna go with a Chanto. Disney's next anime feature is about uh, Madre Gras, who uh, lives in the mountains of Colombia in a magical place called Echanto, where each of um, the children, except one uh, named Maribel, has been blessed with power, with a power, when the, when the magic surrounding the Echanto is um, in danger. Maribel may be uh, the only person who can save her family. Now, this is supposed to feature new music by Limel Miranda, who is no stranger for Disney because, of course, uh, he did music for Moana. So this could easily become the next Moana, I'm guessing. Uh, it was just announced that Brooklyn Nine-Nine's uh, Stephanie Beatrice had just joined the cast. This sounds like it could be really interesting. I mean, I'm getting a bit of a Coco vibe as well. So I'm curious to see um, how great the music is going to be. It is going to be from the same directors of Zootopia, so there's that. So yeah, definitely look forward to check this one out. Alright, number four, I'm going to go with another Fox movie, and that is Free Guy. Now, in in this, uh, Ron Rell starts as a bank teller named Guy, who's a... Uh, Bank gets robbed multiple times daily, but when Guy starts wondering what's going on, he realizes he's uh, in a uh, he's a non-playable character in a video game. This also stars J- uh, Jody Comer, Lil Al Halley. Uh, is from director uh, Sean Levy, who also has a movie called The Adam Project coming out this year as well. So Ryan Reynolds and um, Sean Levy literally has two films coming out this year. Uh, so there's that. I mean, the trailers for this has looked awesome. You know, it looks really hilarious looks fun i mean you've got ron rails uh in this and i've been a ron rails friend for years i mean this it literally looks like a pg-13 deadpool in a way but yeah definitely looking for a check out free guy all right coming in at number three i'm gonna go with pixar's luca it's a coming of age story about luca um who spends his summer in on the italian riveria and his best friend uh the cat uh, the catch, his friend happens to be a sea monster from another world. Now this definitely sounds intriguing. Uh, it's supposed to be like all uh, Pixar's Love Letter to Italy, which I think is really cool. I'm half Italian, so know that. Anyway, um, Pixar does some really, you know, saw stuff. I'm hoping this thing does go to theaters. I mean, I'm hoping next, like this summer, these will be good and you know, uh, we'll be able to watch this film in theaters and not on Disney Plus. But I, I think Luca will be pretty decent. I'm I'm curious to see who is um who's actually even gonna uh, voice in this. I mean, they don't really have a voice cast for this film yet, so Alright, number two, I'm gonna go with the remake of West Side Story. Now this is supposed to start Ansel Elgort. Uh after seeing her in the prom, uh, I'm really curious to see uh Irina DeBose in this. Of course it is a remake of, you know, the classic a uh, West Side Story film. I'm really interested to check this one out. Uh, it is Steven Spielberg's first ever musical film, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I mean, the original is just such a classic. I mean, could you... It's a little hard to uh, top the original, but I'm pretty sure Spielberg could do one heck of a job with this, so hopefully it'll be pretty decent. All right, my number one anticipated Disney film of the year is Black Widow. I'm sorry, Black Widow looks really awesome. You know, I've been really digging these trailers. I mean, of course, the movie will have um, got released by now if it wasn't for the pandemic. And I'm still hoping theaters be open by May, so that way this thing goes to theaters and not Disney+. Plus. I mean, it looks really intriguing. You know, you got Scott Johansson, Florence Pugh is in this. Uh, so, I mean, you got David Harbour, Rachel Weisz. I think this looks like it could be really cool. I mean, it is going to be uh, the first MCU movie of the year, so there's that. So hopefully we actually get to see this thing in Dears when it gets released. Alright. Uh, that's pretty much it. Let me do the quick rundown. 10 Snickerella, 9 Deep Water, 8 Raya and the Last Dragon, 7 Chang Chi, 6 Eternals, 5 Ashanto, 4 Free Guy, 3 Luca, 2 West Side Story, and number 1 is Black Widow. Now there's those of other ones I probably could have added. Oh, let's see. Corella looks pretty decent. I'm looking forward to check out Jungle Cruise. Uh, French Dispatch. Ron's Gone Wrong. 
oh, there's something everybody's talking about. Jamie, the Beatles documentary. Uh, a couple of Disney Plus films looks pretty um, intriguing. But uh, let me, uh, I don't know, let me leave it to you guys. What are some of your anticipated Disney movies of 2021? Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for more notifications. This is Simu Sion.